What is good, my rags and fitness people, my rags and fitness folks, my rags and fitness fam. It is your man, Rags, back off up in this thing. And when I tell you I'm up in it, I'm talking about I'm knee deep, all the way off up in it. Guys, do yourself a favor. Do everybody a favor. Do the world a favor, man, and keep God first in everything that you do, day in and day out. Make the main thing the main thing, man. And shake all of the haters off. And for all of my Christmas Tide football fans, can I please get a roll, tie, roll, baby? <laughs> Guys, it's your man Rags. Back off in this thing today, man. And we got some things to discuss today. This is Tennessee week, guys. We got a few more days. Today is Wednesday, October 16th. We got a few more days, right, before it gets all down and dirty. We got to go to Nayland Stadium, guys, so we got some things to discuss. We're not going to make a long video today, but we're going to talk about a few things that's happened, you know, a little recruiting, some things that may have been talked about from last week game and all that, right? So, guys, we're going to start off by talking about Mr. Beamer for the South Carolina Gamecocks, right? That was our last week game. We squeaked past that one. It's an unnecessarily tough game for us. But, hey, it is what it is. A win is a win, right? Hey, man, that's where we have to look at it right now. It's not our same dominant Alabama football team that we're used to. Not as dominant as we would like, but they're still playing pretty good football, right? Five and one. Two and one in the conference. So Mr. Uh, Beamer was asked last week, hey, I'm paraphrasing, right? He said, hey, the uh, the guy asked him, what did you see in the Alabama defense while you was doing your studying, study, studying throughout the week, right? And Mr. Beamer stated, he said, hey, when looking at the video, when looking at the uh, the tape on these guys, we knew that we would have some success on this defense. I'm paraphrasing, guys. We knew that we would have some success on this defense. Me taking that ass, hey, man, we know that these guys are not the Alabama of old, right? Because usually you hear people say, hey, man, that's a tough defense. That's a tough coach defense. That's a Nick Saban-led defense. We know that they're going to be on their P's and Q's. We know they're going to go through the process. We know that it's going to be a tough sledding for us throughout this football game. That's not what he said. He said we knew that we would have some success. He looked at that 4 2 5 defense and he knew that he would chew it up. So if Mr. Beamer is looking at that defense like that, you better believe that every football coach out there is looking at this defense like that. Now, that's Mr. Beamer that said that. Just imagine what Mr. Josh Heupel is saying right now. You know, he's supposed to be the offensive guru, right? So this guy right here might be licking at the chops right now. So I'm pretty sure. All these guys have heard whatever been going on throughout the week, and hopefully they're putting some more wrinkles or something in this defense, right, to confuse this offense a little bit more. Because a young freshman, uh, Nico Amaliva, however you say this guy's last name with those uh, Go Big Oranges, those Tennessee volunteer guys, man, he's going to be something special, you know what I mean? But we got to rattle him this year. We got to get a hand on this guy and put constant pressure on this guy. Now. Mr. Kane Warmick was asked about his defense and what do he think that we can do better? Once again, old Rags is paraphrasing. And he said something to the effect that he want a better pass rush, right? He want these guys to get on, on his quarterback and put some pressure on this quarterback, on these quarterbacks, right? I guess if I could paraphrase it a little bit better, I put it in Rags terms. He want to be hanging all off your quarterback. <laughs> that's what he want to be doing, right? So he said he want a better pass rush. He want to get to this quarterback and, 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 and eliminate any kind of thing that he can do with his feet, with his arm, whatever, right? And we know that we're not going to get to this guy every, every time. And Tennessee's got a big, nasty offensive line. Now, it seems to be as if Alabama and Tennessee is on a collision course with each other. It's like we're always right up under each other in the rankings, um, even though we're not up under each other in the um the uh the, the rankings right now, 
as far as the AP poll go, we're right up under each other in the 2024 Southeastern Conference standings. In the conference standings, they got us right next to each other. We're both two and one in the conference, five and one overall. So this is going to be a best man win type scenario, right? May the best man win. You got number seven, Alabama, against number 11, Tennessee. And it's going to be a tough sledding for both of these teams, right? I know they're talking about the crowd noise. It's going to be within Nayland Stadium. And it's most definitely going to be off the Richter scale. Nayland Stadium is one of the biggest college football stadiums out there. Probably the biggest, I think, besides the big house in Michigan. Um, they pack that thing down and they play Rocky Top all day long. Um, the one of the players was asked about um, what do they think about the song Rocky Top? I think it was Mr. Uh, Tim Smith. And he said, at practice, we have played the song Rocky Top all throughout practice. He said that's all he hears. And they asked him, what do he think about it? He said it's very catchy. It's a very catchy tune. Hey, hopefully we can shut all of that down this week. No more Rocky Top. Because I'm planning on, I got a pack of cigars around here somewhere, and I'm planning on, well, I ain't going to smoke the cigar because I don't smoke. But I will put that cigar in my mouth and have a good time. Um. They asked these guys a lot of questions. They've been asking Mr. DeBoer a lot of questions, and he's pretty much methodical. You know, Kalen DeBoer is going to be Kalen DeBoer. Very cool, calm, collected type guy. I will tell you this about this football game. Just like with the South Carolina game, we can come out and we can establish some dominance, right? We can establish a whole new identity, a different identity with coming out and putting a hole in Tennessee. Going to Nayland Stadium, and putting a hole in Tennessee. Now, the only loss that we've had this year has come on the road to Vandy. And now I will say this. Everybody's talking bad about Vandy, but I think it's going to end up becoming some good talk about Vandy coming around here. And Vandy have an opportunity next week. Now, they're going to play Ball State this week. They have another opportunity to knock off another number one team in Texas. If Texas coming out, come out being soft and Thinking they're just going to run over Vanderbilt, they'll have another one under their belt, and it'll make us look just that much better, baby. So I will also end up being a nice, pretty nice loss if Vanderbilt could take care of business throughout the rest of this year. Um, right now, that's neither here nor there. We got to talk about our Alabama Chrism tie, right? And uh, the topic of discussion has been defense all over the land. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about some people have been talking about offense, too, saying that they believe Mr. Nick Sheridan didn't have a good play call in game last week and that uh, he shouldn't be left off, let, let off the hook. And in some instances, I do, uh, I do uh, agree. Uh, we're going to have to find out something else to do besides just running Jalen Miro and stuff like that. Um, we're going to have to get these wide receivers open. I don't know what we did this week. I watched Mr. Jamarcus Shepard interview uh, with the press. And uh, he seemed pretty, how can I say, not frustrated, not flustered, but he was pretty much aggressive with some of the answers that he gave, right? Um, I believe that he's talked to his players. I don't believe he's babying anybody. I believe he's telling them like it is. Even Mr. Ryan, with a 17-year-old, Mr. Ryan Williams, he's letting him know, man, hey, you're not that yet. You need to get out there and do a little bit better than what you're doing. From the interview that I saw, during the post interviews, that's what I heard him saying, right? Um, guys, with all that being said, we've been doing a little recruiting. Let's go over here and see this guy that we got for recruiting. We got uh Mr. Cavante Henry. Now he's in junior college right now. He goes to Cerritos, I think that's how you pronounce that. Cerritos College, uh Lawndale, California, class of 2025. Now I'm looking right here on 247 Sports, guys. And um, from what I see, on 247, they got him ranked as a three-star Juco player, 88 overall. Well, every, a lot of other places I've been hearing him called a four-star. I even heard somebody call him a five-star. So I don't know about that, guys. That's, that's not on me. I'm reading this straight off of 247 Sports. A lot of people don't like to look at those guys. They go to own three. But right now, this is what I'm looking at. This is the source. They got him number four nationally, two deep, the number two defensive lineman in their class as far as JUCO goes, and number one in California as far as JUCO goes, right? Um, 
So that's what he did, ladies and gentlemen. He ended up uh, decommitting from Mississippi State, which right now Mississippi State is at the bottom of the SEC. And I guess he wanted to go to somebody that's going to actually uh, be a competitor, a uh, contender. And he ended up flipping from Mississippi State on October the 14th to Alabama. So that's what we got there, guys. And this guy is – he's a defensive lineman. He's 6'4", 220 pounds, man. So – um. Hopefully, he's going to be one of those guys that can come in and contribute to the program. We're going to have a lot of those uh, long, twitchy guys that can come off and, and, and get at your quarterback. He's going to be hanging all. He's going to be hanging all off your quarterback, man. So hopefully, this guy is going to come through and actually contribute to the program. And uh, hey, young man, welcome to the Capstone. Welcome to Title Town. Tuscaloosa, you're now a Alabama Crimson Tide football player, man. Congratulations, we love you to death, man. We're gonna we're gonna wrap you in our warm embrace, and we're gonna be saying your last name a lot. Now we used to saying Henry around here, Devonte Henry, right? We got us another Henry. So come down here and, and do your thing, man. Let's get on these quarterbacks, guys. So. With that being said, man, that's pretty much all the news we got today. Is that, you know we got us a new recruit. The other day, they still got us favorite right now in this Tennessee game. Hey, man, um, I've been, you know, I don't want to say I've been down on my football team, but they just, it's a different look, right? And it's a different feel because I'm used to a different personnel being on the sidelines. And I was so comfortable with that personnel that I didn't have a lot of doubts, right? But with this new personnel, I'm not used to this yet. And I'm just hoping that the players have it in them to know that this is a big rivalry. This is something that you don't take lightly. The, the noise is going to be crazy. Tennessee is going to give it everything that they have because they're upset from last year coming to Tuscaloosa and getting beat. Um, this is just one of those things, man. It, you got to know this is big time right here for Alabama football if you're on this football team. So all of the uh, transfers and all of the young guys that we have out there, if any way you're listening to Rags and Fitness YouTube channel and checking Rags out in the studio doing this thing, just know that I'm telling you right now, this is a big deal for all of us that grew up and lived in Alabama and all of us that grew up and lived in Tennessee. This is a big deal for us, even though we have dominated these guys over the last, what, 15, 20 years, uh, they're looking to take over this rivalry right now and they beat us two years ago uh they had a lot of help now and just know the same way they had a lot of help the last time they're going to have a lot of help this time so you have to be disciplined in what you do alabama crimson Tide football team fan base let's stand behind our guys man um i know it's been rough i know we all have an opinion on our football team but right now at this moment in time we got to lock in with our guys we got to support our guys because they need us they hear the chatter, right? The coaches hear the chatter, right? And um, right now we just need to be behind these dudes, let them know that we're going to be supporting them throughout thick and thin. Um, right now they still have them a 53.6% favorite to beat Tennessee in Nayland Stadium. Uh, they got us, I think they got the spread three points for us. They got us beating them by three points. And, and I'm going to tell you, this, this is how – inconsistent this Alabama football team is, right? And I already know I said that we need to be standing behind and I'm standing up behind them. So just take this coming out I'm about to make. All the games that we were supposed to win and, and uh, win by a large margin, well, I won't say all the games. I'm going to speak on the South Carolina game. We were supposed to win that one by a large margin and we didn't at home. Now we're going to go to Nayland Stadium and we're supposed to win by a small margin on the road. I got a feeling the inconsistency of this team, what we're going to see is not the same bad Alabama. We're going to see an outstanding Alabama, guys. That's what we're going to see. We're going to see an outstanding football team, and we're going to say, where have this football team been? We want you mad. We want you with your backs against the wall and saying, hey, man, we're in a hostile territory. We're going to come here and plant our flag on the middle of your field and show you that we own Nayland Stadium. We've owned it over the last 15, 20 years, and we're going to own it. This weekend, when we come up there, we're going to smoke cigars. We're going to have a party. We're going to talk all day long. And Mr. Hypo is going to have to answer for what happened in this game. Why did Alabama come in? And why was Alabama so dominant in this football game? 
So, guys, I believe that's what type of football game that it's going to be. I believe we're going to come out and play our best, right? We're going to – they say styles make the fight. If Tennessee come out and thinking they're just going to pound the ball, pound the ball, pound the ball, that's not going to work on this defense. But if they throw wrinkles in it, sh uh, shovel passes and stuff like that, that may give us a fit. So if we come out expecting some some uh, some wrinkles and stuff like that, defense, keep it outside containment, not letting Nico get out and do his thing or uh, letting big pass plays happen, the safety's got to – do what they do best, right? Keon Sab and Malachi Moore help these young corners out, help these um, inexperienced corners out, right? Damani Jackson, we know he's good, but we still need the help out. That's what you're for. You're for a safety net, right? So keep your eyes and your heads on the swivel. Um, when it's time to tackle a guy and bring him down, let's tackle him and bring him down, right? Stripping the ball is another thing, right? That's something else that Mr. Womack brought up in one of his uh, press conferences. Um, he was saying, that usually the first guy to the ball is the guy that needs to try to get the guy on the ground, right? The next guy up is the guy that should be stripping the ball. But a lot of times we see the first tackler try to get in there and strip the ball out. So um, with that being said, guys, we got to do a little bit better on that. Getting these guys on the ground. Don't worry about so much the turnover right now. Let's get a turnover on downs because these guys have been wanting to go for it on fourth down. And guess what? Mr. Josh, Josh Hypo is not going to be any different. He's going to want to go for the um going to go for it on fourth down a lot if he get in certain situations, right? But I'm gonna tell you the one thing that can kill that. The first one or two times that he go for it on fourth down and we stop them and get turnover turnovers on down, that's gonna cut out immediately. So, guys. Let's get to the ball, get these guys on the ground. We'll create turnovers if we can, stripping the ball out, doing things like that. It's going to happen, guys. It's going to happen. So, as we know, turnover margin last week was plus two. We need to be in the plus in turnovers this week also. Guys, I've talked a lot. I've said a lot of things. Uh, we're just talking Tennessee football right now, Alabama football right now, and how big this game is going to be. Florida pushed these guys to the max last week. South Carolina pushed us to the max last week. Alabama Crimson Tide. And uh, maybe that's a good thing we're being pushed to the max, guys. Hopefully this coaching going to come around and everything going to be good to go. This is a new coaching staff, so we got to expect some growing pains with this coaching staff. And a win is a win is a win is a win. Even if it's ugly, I don't care what you say at the end of the day. We're still 5-1. and one. Shit, we'd be 5-1. and one. No, we should be 6-0. and zero. But... Even the best stumble every now and then, guys. We might have lost the battle, but we have not lost the war. And we're still on track, man, to being the champions of college football. Alabama Crimson Tide, number seven. Currently, we're going to the top, baby. Hey, man, I know you love looking down into the depths of my eyes, man. I got things to do. I got people to see, places to go, man. So listen, with all that being said, guys, Hope you have a nice night, man. I got to get out of here already. Yeah.